If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at shiresociety.com. I'm going to open the public hearing on House Bill 161-FN relative to beverage sales at Farmer's Market. Prime sponsor, Representative Hunt. The only sponsor. He was over on the second floor of State House in front of the elevator talking to Andy Sanborn about five to ten minutes ago. ITL. Tuesday night they had one of the highest points in the game. Yeah. 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 Y
meals tax on takeout, <coughs> but for somehow we forgot or we dropped out, I'm not quite sure exactly how it went missing, um, the, uh, the fact that there would be the beer tax, which is 30 cents a gallon, and the wine tax, which is 5%, would be applied uh, if the sample was occurring. So it was a mistake. We forgot to put it in there. And uh, it was picked up um, in roll bills last September. And that's why the bill is now in Representative Herbert remembers this bill. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I was going to ask questions. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so. Are you all set? Yep. Questions? Representative Alman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think the other tastings you're talking about are on site. Correct. Um, but in this case, it would be wherever the farmer's market was. Is this going to be on the honor system, or how, how does it get collected? Um, well, and, and that, and, even, and I think you, I don't, were you involved in, 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 but we've had, over the time here, we've had a little bit of issues about this whole farmer's market. And this first one was about the sale, first we had, we, it was rather easy to let them sell it. But then the issue was tasting and how we were going to handle the tasting. So we went through, I think, not just once, but twice it went through a study committee and trying to work it all out and making sure. But the Liquor Commission, finally, the way we created the language, that they were satisfied that the system is like anything. And that, for instance, if you're a, um, uh, you know, a, a manufacturer and you're going to do an on-site tasting, you still have the obligation to make sure the tax is collected. Um, so yes, at the end of the day, it would be uh, the collection of this tax, which is the manufacturing tax, different from the meals tax, that it is still um, reported at the manufacturing site. It's still included, and there's a line item in their, in their spreadsheet, I guess, that it says, you know, uh, tasting or that it occurred off-site, and so therefore the manufacturing is still occurring, you know, still getting collected tax. But if you want to call it an honor system, um, my understanding is the commission is pretty zealous about going out and doing their site visits to all the beverage, all the different manufacturers, and making sure that they report the, what they have. And the federal government also has a collects a tax, and, uh, and not that you guys care too much about that, but but I, I would humor you that there was some conversation that wouldn't it be nice if we had the same tax structure as the federal government's from the same tax rate that would make it easy for people to collect the tax but we have not we have not gone down that path each of our uh, each wine and beer each one has a different tax rate and a different method of taxing so you know the liquor commission would not have to start visiting all the farmers markets they would do it anyways, only in the sense that we, their major task, their number one task, is not so much worrying about the tax collection, which is to make sure that nobody is uh, over-consuming or anybody is being sold who is underage. So they could make a, a, a visit. Representative Beer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The question that comes to my mind is we listen to the governor say no, no new taxes, no new fees. Have you run this by the governor's office? Is he on board? Uh, absolutely, because this is a housekeeping measure. The tax did exist. The tax is being collected now. It's just that, that the statute got dropped out of tax. Other questions? So, I so, represent Tucker. So you refer to beer and wine, but this just says beer. Correct. The, the wine was not a problem. It was the beer that we, we that you left out. We okay. Left out. Thank you. And like I say, it's a different tax structure. Beer is is gallonage, and <coughs> I'm sure you all know it's thirty cents a gallon, and that's a very nice number. Doesn't change. Oh, and we won't. We, beer should stay flat. <laughs> in price. <laughs> so you know, there are a lot of people that, that brew beer in their basements or backyards that would be covered by this. If they if they sell this beer at, on a, a farmer's market, I would imagine it's 
I mean, well, you're venturing into policy, but we can talk about you know our beer policy laws. We we have several different kinds of manufacturing laws in the state. We have nano brewers. We have brew pubs, and then we have beverage manufacturers. All have a different license structure and all have different requirements. And this bill only applies to the beverage manufacturer. It, 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 in order to be able to be a beverage manufacturer, you have to be licensed. Yeah, have to and be licensed. If you're licensed, then you must be collecting the tax the on the beer tax. Beer. Well, see, what actually happens is generally the beer tax is actually collected by the beer distributor. And that's a whole other can of worms that we have, and it's that the beer distributors have a specific protection to ensure that uh, that if you don't, uh, uh, if they, they don't get paid for their beer tax, they can cut off a licensee. But that because it's so important that they get their beer tax paid. But what happens is because we allow tastings at a beverage manufacturer, then we are expanding that tasting to these farmers markets. So the way I would example, I would give an example is you might have an occasion, uh, like we have in, over in the Keene area, uh, once a year we have a, a wine tasting event. So in that case, the wine is coming from the manufacturer and then the tax is going to be collected by the manufacturer, not by the distributor in that case, okay? So if you have a beer tasting, well, you, you may see the beer tents, and if, you're, if you're getting the beer directly from the manufacturer, in other words, they're not using the distributor, if they're delivering it to you directly, they are responsible for collecting the tax. Otherwise, if the beer is going to go to a licensee, on-premise, off-premise licensee, and it goes to a distributor, the distributor would collect the tax. Michael, we can get deeper and deeper into this. <laughs> My question is, how does a manufacturer know that the beer is going to be sold at a farmer's market. Ah, because they're the ones who are delivering it. Oh, the manufacturers deliver all the beer. Nobody they else delivers it. The, the, the tent is going to be done by the manufacturer. If you are a licensee, you can get a one-day license. And if you get a one-day license, the manufacturer, uh, uh, you would still get your beer through a beer distributor. But if we're talking about tastings, but we did expand the tastings to include the actual sale of the beer. But this doesn't mention tasting. I, I understand that this you're you're seeing a very limited part of what the whole statute was about. We're dealing with the bill. If you were to look at the RSA that this is inserted, in, it's about it's about the farmers market. Tasting. Any other questions? And I'd love to come talk to you guys all about liquor laws. They're very interesting. <laughs> very busy. <Byzantine. laughs> very busy. <Byzantine. laughs> you to see, see why I could consider me the guru of liquor laws. It can get really complicated. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present the question. Next is Ian Freeman from Keene, New Hampshire Liberty Party. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Ian Freeman, uh, one of the co-chairmen of the New Hampshire Liberty Party, and I oppose this bill. Um, I think that uh, it was just described, the liquor laws are Byzantine, uh, confusing, nebulous, hard to understand, and uh, in the live free or die state, maybe it shouldn't be that way. Maybe we should be going the other direction and looking at uh, taxes that can be repealed rather than uh, continuing to enforce them. Maybe we should consider repealing the entirety of the Liquor Commission. After all, why is it that we need them anyway? It almost feels like they're a vestige of alcohol prohibition still left over today. Uh, I mean, they're not actually protecting people from drinking too much. Obviously, there's plenty of college students across New Hampshire who have no problem acquiring as much alcohol as they want to. So, I mean, why do they exist? It's just about control and it's about, uh, it's about funding. So I think leave the farmer's markets alone, let's roll back whatever taxes exist and this bill goes in the wrong, the wrong direction. So are you saying we should eliminate the beer tax? Absolutely, eliminate the entire liquor commission. Mm -hmm. right. Any questions? 
Representative Elmy. Thank you. Are you also saying then that we should eliminate the beer, the alcohol enforcement for minors that we had in place through the Liquor Commission? Well, I think that um, if there, if towns want to have that enforcement, that they can do that on their own. You don't need to have the Liquor Commission doing that. I don't support that sort of thing. Um, I mean, I've seen Keene police do it. I don't. It's very rare that you'll see the liquor enforcement people in Keene. They come down every now and then, and they usually go into bars. Typically, on the streets of Keene, it's the Keene police who do that enforcing. Uh, and I've seen them and how they handle that situation. Basically, they make college girls cry when they um, catch them on the streets with an open container. I've seen that happen. And, you know, we all know that that's not stopping them from yeah. uh, from drinking. They're just going to pay hundreds of dollars into the court system and then go right back out the next weekend to do it again. Okay, I think we want to stay on the subject of the beer tax. Sure. Any just questions? answering the question. Sorry. Sam, not thank you for testimony. Next is a Daniel Penny, is it? Daryl Perry. I fell and been up in first grade, and it stuck with me my entire life. Liberty Lobby LLC in opposition. I, I'm glad there was part of my writing that you were able to read. Yes, again, for the record, Daryl Perry, CEO of Liberty Lobby LLC, and I am opposed to this bill on principle, uh, mainly for the reason that was mentioned, I believe, by Representative Bear about this is essentially a new tax, although it's not a new tax, it's closing a loophole on an existing tax, but we don't know if anybody is actually using the loophole that exists because there's another section of statute that makes it sound as though every beverage cell, and beverage is the nice legal term for carbonated uh, alcohol things, uh, primarily beer, uh, there, there's another section of statute that makes it sound like every time you sell one of those, it's subject to the tax, and uh, the sponsor of this bill is saying that, well, there's this other section where it doesn't specifically say things at a uh, farmer's market, so therefore we need to close the loophole, again, that we don't know if anybody is actually using, and if you read the fiscal note, uh, it says that the Liquor Commission has absolutely no way of calculating how much increased revenue they will have. And again, that's because they don't know if anybody is actually using this supposed loophole that exists. And I would agree that uh, getting rid of taxes should be the priority, not finding ways to close loopholes that might not even be used. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Perry. Questions? Sam, none, thank you. Anybody else wish to testify for or against House Bill 161? Sam, none, I close the public hearing on House Bill 161. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.